Ness is director of the new internationalism project at the Institute for Policy Studies. And she's also international advisor for Jewish Voice for Peace. And she's joining us from Washington, D.C. Very good to have you with us on Al Jazeera. Thank you very much indeed. I understand that in... Um, I believe Congress, I think, or in the Senate, there is a, a, a small group of progressive legislators that are trying to put through some sort of uh, legislation with regard to, to trying to get a ceasefire in Israel. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, this is a very important move. I think everybody around the world is calling for an immediate ceasefire to stop this extraordinary killing that's going on. And the resolution that just dropped about an hour ago uh, with five or six members of Congress as the initial signers, uh, is very broad. It, it says, whereas all human life is precious, and the targeting of civilians, no matter their faith or ethnicity, is a violation of international humanitarian law. And it has two more brief paragraphs and then calls directly on the Biden administration to first immediately call for and facilitate de-escalation and a ceasefire, and secondly, calls on the administration to uh, send and facilitate humanitarian aid. So it's very simple. It doesn't get into long discussions about the origins of the of the crisis and what led to it, but it calls for the immediate uh, uh, calling out of the need for a ceasefire. And I think right now that's what's so desperately needed. It's an interesting group of uh, members of Congress. It's uh, somewhat diverse, progressive Democrats, um, but I think this is the kind of resolution, it doesn't have the force of a specific bill, but it's a statement of the sense of Congress that wants the administration to call for a ceasefire. If so I'm hoping that this will get traction. Well, I was going to go to ask, um, if there isn't a Speaker of the House, and I, if I remember correctly, there isn't yet, uh, is this going to actually get much traction? It, it, because logistically or procedurally, there isn't a, a system in place yet to, to, to make it go through the process. Well, I think there's two things. One is that without a speaker right now, there is some move in Congress to figure out ways to get around that and to pass certain things. Secondly, this is not, for example, a funding bill that requires very specific allocations of funds or something like that. This is an expression of intent. And in that context, I think that if there were to be political will in the Congress, either in the House or in the Senate, to vote for this, that could go forward. It, could be, it would go forward as a call to the administration. It doesn't change anything in terms of budgets or uh, appointments or anything like that. It's an expression of, in this case, a moral necessity of a immediate ceasefire. And I'm hoping that can go ahead. Mm. I, I mentioned before you're the, an international advisor for Jewish Voice for Peace. Uh, since this conflict began, have you been noticing any sort of trend or change in the way that people are engaging with uh, what is going on? Yes, I think we're seeing the the horror of the first day when the first reports of the, the horrific attacks against civilians that had gone on in Israel coming from Gaza, uh, which remains something that people are feeling very powerfully. It was, it was horrific, uh, complete violations of international law, and the condemnations have been completely appropriate, people are now being able to hold that, to hold that horror and hold that condemnation while seeing both the question of what is it going to take to stop this kind of violence, recognizing what gives rise to it, in this case, 16 years of a crippling siege before we ever got to the new siege in Gaza, 55 years of military occupation, 75 years of oppression of Palestinians, depending on when you start the clock, determines how you see it. And what we're seeing now, I think, is that people are recognizing that it's possible to both fight to prevent an even greater level of killing and destruction, potentially a genocide, to do that while maintaining the, the outrage and the, the grief for what has already happened. There's a, a famous statement from a, a well-known trade union activist, a woman affectionately known as Mother Jones in the Mine Workers Union a century ago in the United States, who said, pray for the dead, fight like hell for the living. And I think that organizations like Jewish Voice for Peace and many others, Jews and others, Muslims, Christians, everybody, is seeing the necessity of doing both those things, mourning and 
grieving for those we have lost and fighting like hell to make sure mm -hmm. there are no more lost. We're sensing a growing concern about the level of hate crimes that may be happening ar around the world. And of course, there was the story just within the last 24 hours of the yeah. six-year-old boy who was stabbed to death uh, and, and his mother was badly injured. I think it was in Chicago. I believe the individual has been charged with a hate crime. How concerned are you, given your, uh, your unique position, shall we say, within the, the, the society, your outlook on it, how concerned are you that this could actually spread unless something is done to try to calm the, the, the anger that people are feeling? Well, I think there is a very real uh, fear of the rise of, in this case, Islamophobia. This was a six-year-old boy, and his mother was injured very, very badly. She survived, luckily. They are Palestinian Muslims who were living in the United States, in Illinois. The, and this child was killed brutally. Uh, because he was a Muslim, because he was a Palestinian. So I think this kind of attack is very much a danger. I think real uh, anti-Semitism is on the rise, coming from far-right white supremacists, which is where anti-Semitism is rooted in the United States. And unfortunately, anti-Semitism is sometimes weaponized in a false way, under false claims of anti-Semitism, uh, used against critics of Israeli policies, of Israeli apartheid. And that, of course, weakens the important real fight against the most dangerous anti-Semitism, which comes from right-wing white supremacy. So we're seeing a rise in both attacks on Arabs and Muslims, and potentially, although so far we have not seen this level of, of attacks on Jews, but that is certainly a, a threat mm. that we have to be very aware of. We saw this after 9-11, when Muslims and those perceived to be Muslims, Arabs, uh, uh, those that were perceived to be Arabs walking down the street were the subject of attacks. Many people brutally beaten, mm. some were killed. So, you know, this is something that we are all too familiar with mm. in the United States. And it could be that we're going to see it again. We have to fight very hard so that that doesn't come mm. back to haunt us now. Phyllis Bennis, we appreciate you being on Al Jazeera, ma'am. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you.